Welcome along everybody. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card which I've called Starstruck. And to make this card I used the texture set, the um, small grass stamp from the texture set and I used the stones from the Starstruck collection. I used a mouse from a different collection but there is a mouse in this set um, you can use. But if you do use this mouse, he faces the other way. So just remember to put your stones on the right hand side of your card and not like I'm going to do on the left hand side. But to be honest, you can use any of the mice from your collection. Um, there's a lot of them that look upwards. So um, I'll leave that decision to you. So I've cut a piece of copier paper and I've masked off about an inch. You can see on the card it's about an inch at the bottom, which I've uh, masked off. With my with my copy of paper and I'm going to start off with one of these blending brushes I'm going to be using the Neptune first color Neptune and I'm going to rub it onto my ink pad like this and then I'm going to start in the corner and just work it right over the top of the card and then we want to come about just about halfway about there when I say halfway, I mean halfway from the end of this copy of paper. Now, what I'm doing here is putting down a sort of wash to start with, because what I've found is when you're blending darker colours, it helps um, to sort of layer them. Um, I don't know why. I think it just, um, you know, obviously the inks take better over the inks. And as always, I say to you, when you're blending like this, we want this to be quite dark just give you know be a bit patient give it time to dry so i'm just going to add a little bit more of the blue i'm going to go a bit darker in the middle along the middle here because i want the top to be black so i want this bit to be a bit darker blue and and try not to blend too far down under uh, under halfway because that's where the orange is going to go but as you blend down just give it that sort of misty look and the, the way you do that is you press hard if you want the hard colour. Can you see the hard colour coming out? And then just lift the tension off the brush to get the lighter sort of shading. OK, so that's with the blue. And then I'm just going to replace my lids because these inks dry up quite quickly. I'm going in with first colour black. And then I'm going to put quite a lot of ink on this. Again, I'm using the same sort of blending brush for this. Um, you can use whatever you want to. Um, I'm really using these brushes for quickness, but you can use the baby wipe technique or larger blender brushes. Just be careful um, with the black because you, you, we do want to put quite a lot of black on. When I was um, making this card, the first couple of times I made it, I didn't, I thought, you know, I had the sky looking a bit like it does now. And I thought, oh, that, that's plenty dark enough because obviously you wouldn't normally have a sky like that in a picture unless it was night time. But when I found, I found when I put the inks over the top, the splatter inks, it, it didn't really show up very well. So I've done, I've done that experimenting for you. So I suggest you just get this black as dark as you can get it. And really that takes patience and also a little bit of time for the inks to dry in between. Now, obviously I haven't got, as it always, I haven't got the luxury of that. So I'm going to show you this the best I can. But um, when you come to do it, you will have plenty of time. So it's, it, and trust me, it's definitely worth making the effort with this card because um, the night sky looks much better if it's darker underneath. Because you're going to put a lot of colour and white um, splatters over the top of it. So we need the dark to sort of come through underneath. OK, so I'm just going to I think I'm just going to go in once more. But you get you get the meaning now. So I'm just going to go in the middle there. Like that. And then I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of the Versafine Claire on my brush. This is a lot stronger black ink. And be careful. Um, to hold your copy of paper because if you get this on the white bits of your card it's quite hard to get off so we just go over that there and darken that up a little bit 
Right, I think that's enough for now. Now I am going to wipe my hands because like I say, if you have any traces of the black ink on your hands, it, it gets on the white, it might spoil the picture a little bit. So I'm just going to make sure they're, they're clean. And then I'm going to start from the bottom. So I'm going to start off using a base colour of Distress Oxide Wild Honey. If you haven't got this, don't worry. You can use any similar colour, um, Versacolor or any other inks you might have in your in your stash. Um, preferably inks that blend together. So I'm just rubbing it. I've got one of these big blending brushes here, which is great for um, this sort of technique. And I, the other thing I'm going to do, because this is a big blending brush, I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit first so I don't get a really harsh line and then I'm going to go just underneath the blue line there across the top and then up from the bottom so <clears throat> try not to contaminate your inks at this stage because you want this to be quite orange and um, we don't really want the black down into this this section so I think I'm just going to need a little bit more of that wild honey colour and that I'm going to come up this time from the copy of paper like this don't worry too much about this side because you're going to have the stone wall here or this side if you're using the mouse from the star truck struck set um that's going to cover it up so you know you don't have to concentrate so much on whichever side you're having the, the you decide to put the wall on <laughs> okay so now I'm going in with the first colour um orange and again, I'm putting them on these smaller blending brushes. And I'm going from the top again down. Now you can see the contrast now in that colour. And the way I like to do this is, again, like I showed you in the top part, if you put a little bit of pressure on it, and then as you come down, just lift the pressure from your brush so you get the lighter shade. So do that so it's harder here and then just lift your brush and that way you get that nice transition and not such a harsh line and i'm just going to add a tiny little bit more I'm just going to rub a bit off onto that in on this side and again just quite hard across the top there and then just gently transition it down like that into the bottom and then the last thing of all, just blend it up into the top, but do that last of all, because you don't want to see what happens. You carry the black colour, the blue colour down into the orange, which you don't really want. So I think I'll leave that um, there. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, that uh, piece of coffee paper, I blended the wild honey colour. I'm just going to cut almost a straight line, but just with a, a few little, um, you know, not perfectly straight. And then I'm going to put it about there. And let me, I'm going to tear that because I've got a little nick in the paper. So I'm going to put that about there. And then I'm going to take a dry baby wipe. And I'm going to take first colour violet now. Take a little bit of colour onto the baby wipe. I want that about here, I think. Blend that, make sure it's sort of fairly straight. Blend that off. And then we're going to run... A sort of cloud line along there so just a little bit above the paper a little bit bigger in the middle and then trailing away at either side and a little bit more and then i'll show you what i mean you see there you get a little cloud and i'm just gonna um use a little tiny little bit of the neptune just put that back in place just to define that a little bit but not too much because neptunes are dark blue so yeah you can see and then I'm going to put another one here so just move to another bit of my baby wipe go in with the violet first and you can make these slightly different shapes so we make this one a bit shorter and a bit puffier like that and then go in with the blue just to tail it out a little bit there like that and I might even have a little one up here as well that's going to be a little bit smaller. So the two colours, just like I showed you before, like that. And then when you've done that, just take a clean part of your baby wipe and just blend gently over the top. Like that. 
Okay, so that's basically the top of our sky done. Um, I might just add a, a little bit more black into the top of this um, because that would have dried off a little bit now. And you can see how much better the black takes when you let it dry a little bit. You you know, so that's what that sort of um, illustrates what I was saying about just taking your time and letting this dry a bit. Now, the other thing I did with the original was I made it on a six by six card. Six by six cards aren't actually six by six. It's the envelope six by six. Um, so it's about five and three quarter inches. And then what I did was um, cut it down because you do find sometimes they get a little bit messy on, messy on the back because this is a messy sort of project. Um, I actually really liked it. I thought it suited it um, doing that. So you just trim it a little bit off all around the edge. But you don't have to do that. If, you, if you're, I mean, I am a messy worker. If you're cleaner than me, you won't need to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece off the bottom. I'm going to give my hands a really good clean, get every trace of black off them. Because I'm working into the orange this time. I don't want to go into the orange with the black. And then obviously I've got a piece that I cut the bottom, which mimics it. So I'm going to add a little bit of removable tape right the way along the edge there and then we're going to place that now you want a tiny little bit of the orange showing because we don't want a white line so as little as you can get away with I don't know if you can see that on the camera let me just move that up a little bit tiny little bit of the orange showing and then we're going to do exactly what we did with the, the sky except we're going to go in a little bit like really dark this time so I'm loading up my brush with the first colour black going right the way along the bottom like that and again you know this this takes a little time now this this um the bottom of the card i'm going to i'm going to use versafine black to start with and then i'm going to finish off versafine clear because we're not stamping a great deal on the bottom um, and I want it to be a real contrast. And hopefully when I finish this and lift it off, you'll see the difference that makes. I hope you can see this properly because I'm I'm having to hold, I'm holding the copy of page with this hand and then blending with this hand because to try and stop the card moving around too much. And also to, to make sure the copy of paper doesn't slip because we want to keep this very dark color off the orange. Right, so that's a base layer in the Versicolor Black. And then I'm now gonna go in with the Versifying Clear Nocturne. I'm gonna give it my brush a really good ink in and then you'll see the difference already, look. But because we've already laid down um, a little bit of, of the base color, it takes it, it picks up the color quite quickly. And, and it's definitely worth spending your time on this because it's it's quite a simple, straightforward card, really. I think, you know, this is most people could do this. Um, but it's these it's these uh, this sort of patience and then getting the colours right, getting the base right, I think make all the difference. Um, and I found this out when I was experimenting with this card. I found out, um, especially with the sky, getting that colour just right before you start splattering ink all over it is, is really important. So I'm just gonna go with one more bit of black, I think. And, and I say the only problem when I'm doing these, excuse me, when I'm doing these cards, I'm putting wet, wet, wet ink over wet ink. And what you find that sometimes just moves the wet ink around, you see. Um, so my advice is always leave it a couple of minutes. So I would now, if I wasn't doing a video, I would just leave this a couple of minutes to dry. And then I would come back and do this and then you wouldn't be moving the, the ink around because it would have dried underneath. But for the purposes of this demonstration, you can absolutely see what I'm trying to achieve there. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to put the lid on that. And again, I'm going to wipe my hands because we're using a permanent ink here. And, you know, it'll be very difficult to remove or hide off your work. So I'm going to give my hands a good clean like that. And then I'm going to remove this piece of copy of paper. And you can see the contrast. So it's definitely worth taking your time over that. Now I'm going to turn this piece of paper over so we can start with a clean piece like that. 
And now comes the fun part. And it is quite fun. I'm just hoping, because I'm going to do a splatter technique, it doesn't splatter all over the camera and you won't be able to see the rest of the demonstration. So I'm going to try and be a little bit more gentle um, with it. But you can really have fun with this. So I'm going to start off using a Posca white pen. I'm going to give it a shake. And I'm just going to put this piece of paper here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just using an ordinary uh, stamping block. But if I wasn't doing this demonstration, I'd just do it on my, my mixer pad. Give it a real good shake. Prime the, the Posca pen. And you'll see all the ink starts coming out of it. And, um, you know, this is quite a used Posca pen. So the ink's going to take a while to come out. Now, if you don't have one of these pens then you can use white ink. Um, I've shown that technique before. You splodge it on your mat. You do need quite a lot of ink. And then a tiny little bit of water on the brush and then pick it up. The only thing you've got to bear in mind is if you use too much water on a non-watercolour card, it will buckle the paper. So um, you just be careful. So then, sorry, then you put, I'm using a fan brush for this. Um, you dip your brush in it. Then we're going to remove that. I'm going to dip the fan brush in a, just the tips of it into water, go back into the white ink, the white Posca ink. And then I'm using a knife. It's quite a heavy knife. So I find this works well. Let's just move that up a bit so you can see. And then just gently tap. And then hopefully you can see that. So you're getting all that white ink all over your picture. And then I'm going to just go back in again. like that and then we'll clean the brush off and just dry it off a little bit now once you've got the base of I'm just going to wipe that ink off there because I'm going to use be using some more inks in a minute now you can either do this now or you can do this before you start splattering but I'm using a Versacolor silver ink here and what I'm going to do is try and make the suggestion of a sort of constellation. Now, I don't really know anything about um, astronomy. If you do, and, and you're doing this a card for somebody's birthday, and you know you know that what, that, what the constellation would look like, you, you could actually try and do it in that shape, but I'm not that clever. So I, now, with the silver ink, it's very opaque. So take a bit on your baby white and then rub it off onto a spare bit of paper. And then I'm just going to make a random sort of shape. here and then I'm going to do a little one sort of over there and then I'm just going to go back in again I'm just going to wipe off because again I've tried this a couple of times and if you do this too dark it, it sort of stands out too much you know what I mean so um just just uh, like as always just go a little bit steady with it Okay, so you get the idea there. And then I'm going to go in with the gold, first colour gold, do exactly the same thing. Just wipe it off onto a piece of paper and then just dab it like that. So you get the contrast of the gold and the silver like that. And then I'm also going to take on a clean bit of the vapor wipe, the first colour violet and just add little touches of it. around where I've marked the silver and the gold. Okay, so now we can carry on with the splattering. So I think now I'm going to use a, a Posca gold pen. Uh, I'll do it exactly the same way. You pump it up until you get... Now, if you've got a really um, a liquidy pen, you shouldn't have to add water to it. I added a little bit of water to the white because that pen's, you know, running out a little bit. Now, this one um, is quite... It's quite, there's quite a lot of fluid in it, so I'm not going to add water to it. I'm just going to go straight in with my brush, pick it up like that, and we'll see how we get on. So they get exactly the same technique. There, you can see it coming out. Now try and keep these stars to the top of the page. You'll obviously get, uh, don't worry about this down here because we can go back over that. Um, or if, you, if you're really bothered about it, you can just put a little bit of paper over there. But um, we want most of the stars to be up at the top here. So, um, you know, try and keep it into that area. 
Now, the other technique you can do with the Posca pen, and again, I'm just going to give this a real shake, this one, is you prime the end like this, so you know the ink's coming out of the nib, and because we want the slightly bigger stars now, and then just tap it straight onto your project like this. And then you see you get those slightly bigger, and we only want a few of those. We don't want, we don't want too many of those. I think that will do. Um, and I might, I might add a few of the gold. Let, let's have a look and see. I say this is such fun. You can just have, yeah. You know, look, see, you don't really want them too big. That's probably a bit big there, but you know, hey ho. We can we can um, mute that down a little bit later. So if I wipe those Posca inks off my block, now you can use anything you've got for this. If you've got any of the mica inks, um, you can use those. Um, you know, really, the world's your oyster. Uh, the only thing I would say is, again, don't use too much water because it will buckle your paper. So I'm taking a first kind of royal blue. I'm trying to stick to as few different things as I can. So, you know, it gives you all the opportunity to whatever you've got in your stash. Again, just mix that through. A few blue ones on there. And I'm going to move that paper up a little bit because that is coming down a little bit too far. So... And then I'm going to take a little bit of the orange. Don't want so much of that, just a tiny little bit of that, I think. And then I'm lastly, because I'm trying to use the colours that I've used in the actual background. So I'm going to take the violet. And just add a little bit of that in, like that. Let me splatter that over. Okay, I think that's enough with the splatter in. Now, again, <laughs> I'm just going to clean that, move that block out of the way now, because we don't need that anymore. Um, ideally, I would now uh, let this dry before I do this, but again, I haven't got time. So I'm now using these jelly glaze pens. Don't worry if you haven't got these. Um, but the reason I like using these is because not only do they add the little touch of colour, but they dry slightly raised, so you get that sort of texture. So all I'm going to do with these is just dot all over. And where the gold's gone a bit big, I'm going to dot inside those with a darker colour in a minute. And then I'm using a blue. So you can use any colour you've got in these. I'm just going to go in, see if I can mark that which doesn't seem to be happening though, but I might go over again in white. So just a few of those blue ones like that. And then I've got a red here as well. So we're just going to mark it in red all over like that. Okay. And then lastly, I'm just going to bring my block back and just use a little bit more of the white because the white's really what we want to be the most prominent. So let's see if I can get a bit more ink out of it this time. Obviously, the more undiluted you can have it, the, the whiter it will look on the card. You know, you can see the difference where I've done it straight from the pen. It's a lot whiter. So if you know, hopefully you'll get a pen that's got full of ink, and then you won't have to dilute it at all because that that means you'll get that lovely. And then I'm just going to cover it because I want to. <laughs> I like it. I just It's such a lovely thing to do. It's, it's really satisfying. Okay, well, I think that's enough for the purpose of the demonstration. So you sort of know what I'm getting at now. And don't worry that a few have come under there. That, that, it doesn't matter at all. What we will do is just use our black brush here. Just go over, take a little bit of the Versafine Claire, which will cover all these inks. Just don't go too near the, the top of the line. And then just cover those little splatters up that have gone, gone there. Okay. So I'm going to just tidy up my workspace a little bit because we're going to um, go to the stamping now. So we just move everything out of the way. And I'm going to get myself a, a clean piece of copy of paper to do the stamping on like that so just make sure that that's in the right position where you can see it 
Move that over a little bit like that. Okay. So now we get on to our stamping. So first of all, I'm taking the stone stamp. Now you can see I've masked it off. That's because I don't want all the stones in it. And I found this is the easiest way to do it. Um, to be honest, if you want all the stones in, you can. Um, and also, uh, I would normally, if I wasn't doing a demonstration, I'd probably normally use a stamping platform because then if the colour doesn't take, you can go back in and do it again. Um, which obviously it's a bit more difficult to do that with um, with a one-off stamp. Um, but obviously for the purposes of this demonstration, so you can see, I'm just going to um, stamp it on the block. So I'm just giving that a good old ink with the Versafine Claire. I'm just going to go over it again because I want to make sure I can do this in one go. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to wipe my hands as well. Get the black ink off. Okay, take the masking tape off so you can see the ink's only taken to the top half. And then we place where our ink is slightly underneath and then we stamp. So because the ink's going to be quite wet, as always, I just urge you to let the ink sink in a little bit. Like that. And that's um, got a nice imprint. Now, where it hasn't taken, don't worry at all about that because you can just get a fine liner and just colour it in like this. Um, obviously, you would do this when the ink's dry because fine liners don't work well over wet ink. So we'll just colour that in just for the purposes of demonstration to show you if it hasn't taken properly, that's what you can do, okay? And then we're gonna take our dry baby wipe, take our first colour black ink, load up our baby wipe like that, and then just run it round the areas where the mortar would be um, because we don't want to see any of the orange through the mortar. So first of all, you go in with the first colour black just to get an idea of the strength you need to apply. And then go to your um, Versafine Claire a little bit and then just very gently because you don't, obviously you don't want to obscure the actual stones themselves, but the um, first colour black isn't isn't dark enough. So we're just going to go back over that, and I think that's almost what we're going to do um, in a minute is just highlight all these stones in the um, in a white sig signa pen. So. <clears throat> don't worry if you, you think, oh, I've gone over that. I can't see what it is now because we can highlight it with that. But we want that quite dark. We don't definitely don't want any of the orange showing through that. And then just bring that down to blend it in. OK. And then I'm going to take, I'm going to wipe my hands again. I can't urge you enough when you're using these um, Versafine clairs. Vers just, just check your hands because now we've got that lovely space there. We don't want to get marked with black ink. So I'm taking a small grass stamp, I'm inking it up with the Versafine Clear Nocturne and I'm going to put one at the end here. So sit it just underneath the orange and you get that lovely impression. And then I'm going to leave a slight gap in the middle and then stamp there and then I'm going to go underneath where these stones are. So. We're just going to, now you don't really see this very much, but um, we're going to highlight it in a minute with the white pen. So you will see a bit more of it when I've done that. And then if you want to, you can just add a few extra bits of grass here. I mean, that's entirely optional. You don't really need to. Okay, so that's the grass. And then I'm going to take my little mouse. Now, remember with the Cardio small stamps like this, by the way, I'm inking the mouse up in the first fine clear nocturne as well. I'm giving them a good ink in. Now, give the little stamps a good ink in because my tip is, and I think um, Wendy, Laney and Catriona have all said this. What you want to do is put place him where you want him, but you don't press too hard with the little stamps. Just put your finger on it and just hold it there to let the ink absorb. If you press too hard on these smaller stamps you can sometimes lose all the lovely little details so there can you see and now we've got the fur on his back and his little eye if you squash it down sometimes you lose that so and there's no need to because they're, they're good stamps anyway 
Right, so now my, the final touch is using the um, Signo pen. Now, I think this is one of the best white marker pens for this job um, because it, it the flow, they all get clogged up. Whatever white pen you use, when you're using it on wet, it, wet ink, will clog up. But the lovely thing about this Signo pen is it, it's easy. You just run it off like that. Um, and then what, you, what you're going to do is just line, put a line around all these stones as if the the moon was catching them when you're doing this close up you, you don't really see the benefit of it but when you actually then look at the picture oh, it makes such a difference so we just go around like that and i'm gonna i'm gonna do all of them i'm not going you can see i'm not going all the way around i'm just going about three quarters of the way around them um and just on the bottom there like that and this is really a by eye thing so you know look at it and think, you know I, it looks a bit like fish scales there so I'm actually going to pull some of these down a little bit like that but you know you can you can make your own mind up as you're doing it how you want those to go and I think that's that's fine I'm happy with that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add some little strokes. Now you can see what I mean. So the pen's got a little bit blocked up. So you just run it off onto a little bit of paper and then it's ready to go again. So I'm just going to add some little white strokes into that grass we put in earlier. Just to highlight it. And here. I'm not going to do it on the ones I put there. I want to keep that as the focus there. Uh, maybe a little bit further up onto there to make it look like there's a foreground and a background. And I personally don't want to put a, a highlight around the um, mouse himself. You can if you want to. So basically, that's how I made this card. Um, this is the one I made today and this is the original. So what I did was cut this off trim it a little bit all around the edges uh, actually I probably wouldn't have to do that with this one uh, and in fact I didn't get any mark on the back anyway but then I just mounted it again onto another six by six card and if you look closely you can see some tiny little crystals that I added in this which I think looks really pretty but you know and if you've got any in your stash by all means do that just make sure they're small because you don't want great big um, ones I don't think I think it would spoil it a little bit that's it so I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and I look forward to seeing all your interpretations on the Facebook page. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to welcome you along the next time.